Okay, the final part of the tulip, Perseverance of the Saints, and uh, Charles Spurgeon said the following, quote, I do not believe in the perseverance of the saints, I believe in the perseverance of the Saviour, close quote. Uh, I think the correct term should be the preservation of the saints. To teach perseverance means that you, the saved man or woman, has to do something post the cross, post being regenerated, and I feel that falls into the camp of faith and works, something which the Catholic Church very much holds to. Uh, John MacArthur said the following about uh, one's eternal security, no sin a believer can commit, past, present or future, can be held against him, since that penalty was paid by Christ, and his righteousness was imputed to the believer. No sin will ever reverse this divine legal decision. That's from his study Bible, page 1706. And I would certainly concur with that. Uh, if one does have to persevere in order to be saved, what would happen if one didn't persevere enough? Or if they did persevere, then they're not saved by faith alone, something which we've already discussed. Uh, and that would also allow Roman Catholics to be saved because they believe in faith and works. How would they know if they hadn't endured enough to the end? Also, how would they know if they had endured? How would you have any assurance of salvation? If they hadn't endured enough to the end, would they lose their salvation? Or would they be simply disqualified? And if they did lose their salvation, how would they know when they had lost their salvation? Or what sin would they have to commit for the loss of their salvation? And of course, uh, Hebrews 10.26 says, if you could lose it, you could not get it back. And uh, how many people do you know that believe that uh, salvation can be lost? And yet in the next breath, these same people... Uh, believe you can take it back or you can receive uh, eternal salvation again clearly salvation that you first had wasn't eternal so I have to ask the same question again either one is saved or one is not holy and godly living are one thing and certainly elements that should be evident in each Christian's life but if one trusts in their goodness and their religious output then this too is no guarantee that one is saved or if one does live the complete and supreme Christian life, which is impossible, then who saved who? Did Jesus save that person? Or did that person save himself? Isn't this what the Apostle Paul warns against in Romans 4 too? For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath whereof to glory, but not before God. Spurgeon said, quote, I do not ask whether you believe in Calvinism, it is possible you may not, but I believe you will before you enter heaven. I am persuaded, as God may have washed your heart, he will wash your brains before you enter heaven. Uh, what did Job say about wise men? He said, uh, great men are not always wise. Uh, that's Job 32, 9. Uh, <laughs> Lordship salvation. Uh, John Otis said the following, quote, and he's a Calvinist, Friend, if Jesus Christ isn't Lord of your life, then you are yet lost in your sins. Okay, he's a strong uh, proponent of Lordship salvation. However, Dr. J. Vernon McGee told one of his listeners on his uh, weekly Q&A service that uh, Jesus was not Lord of his life. He said, quote, I have accepted Christ as my saviour, he is not Lord of my life. If that's heresy, so be it. Close quote. Uh, I remember contacting David Hockin from Hope for Today some years ago when I first heard this because I know that Hockin was a supporter of uh, the late Dr. McGee and uh, he said that Vernon McGee was wrong on that issue. I think uh, Hockin holds to Lordship Salvation too. Uh, falling into the two natures in the believer, uh, the late Harry Ironside said the following about this, quote, The flesh in the believer is no better than the flesh in the unbeliever. Uh, John, Macau excuse me, John MacArthur also holds to lordship salvation. 
and uh, John Robbins, uh, a Calvinist, says the following about this, quote, MacArthur attacks justification by faith alone and suggests that works be understood as part of faith. And he's not the only Calvinist to criticize MacArthur's confused theology uh, in connection with uh, sola fide. Should we endure to the end, the Bible says, but he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Matthew 10, 22 and Matthew 24, 13. I want to give you two uh, interpretations of this bit of scripture. Uh, the first is from a reformed Calvinist who was one of several editors uh, for the NIV New Bible Commentary, which came out in 1997. And the second uh, quote is from a premillennial fundamentalist independent Baptist. First up, the reformed Calvinist quote, To follow Jesus is not a route to popularity and influence, at least a life on the run. But verse 23b, referring to Matthew 24, assures the twelve that their mission would not be complete before the Son of Man comes. However often they were repulsed, they would always be more of the cities of Israel to take the message to. Uh, just a correction, that's Matthew 10, 22, that he's referring to, which is cross-reference, I should say, to Matthew 24, 13. Ruttman, Peter Ruttman, says the following, quote, the end has no reference to the end of their lives, and it is aimed at them, referring to the people to whom they were getting ready to witness. No way refers to the destruction of Jerusalem in AD 70, for many who endured to this end were not saved. Furthermore, many who were saved spiritually were killed physically before, during, and after the end. To make matters worse, many of the saved did not endure to the end of AD 70 and died before AD 50. See 1 Corinthians 15, 5 to 10. And that's uh, Ruttman's commentary in the book of Matthew, pages 219-220. Just quickly, there are two uh, main schools of thought on this uh, bit of scripture uh, in conjunction with what I've just cited. First of all, Matthew uh, 10 and Matthew 24 are great tribulation passages and uh, there are those that hold to the need for faith and works uh, to save a sinner in the great tribulation and they say that unless you endure you won't be saved. I don't hold to that position myself but uh, I know a lot of dispensationalists do. Uh, the other view on this which I think is probably more uh, accurate is the word endure can also be translated to overcome he that overcomes to the end shall be saved. And uh, 1 John says we've already overcome the world. And uh, Revelation says, He that overcomes, I will give to be, uh, I'll give a crown, he will sit on my throne. I think it's uh, three or four times in the book of Revelation that term, he that overcomes, is cited. Uh, the Apostle Paul finished the course, kept the faith, and won the crown that the Lord had uh, set him, 2 Timothy 4 7. But is this something that is applicable to all believers? Didn't the Lord tell Paul he would have to take the gospel to kings, to leaders, and suffer many things for him? Acts 9.15 So wouldn't it be fair to say that Paul was somewhat of a special case? However, the apostle did say that the crown that awaited him would also be for others too. Yet what crown are we referring to? I believe this crown is one of five that scripture speaks of. Crown of life or the martyr's crown, the crown of glory, uh, this is an elder's or pastor's crown, the crown of rejoicing, this is the soul winner's crown, uh, those that are brought uh, to Jesus by us, uh, the crown of righteousness, uh, this is the crown for those who love his appearing and will be given in that day, and the incorruptible crown, this is the victor's crown that did not yield or was diverted from the work of the master. So I think friends, uh, Salvation is not the subject here. What is being discussed here are rewards for those that are already saved. That's what Paul uh, is speaking about. Arthur Pink, uh, once again, has something controversial to say. There is a deadly and damnable heresy being widely propagated today to the effect that if a sinner truly accepts Christ as his personal saviour, no matter how he lives afterwards, he cannot perish. This is a satanic lie. 
for it is at direct variance with the teaching of the word of truth. Something more than believing in Christ is necessary to ensure the soul's reaching heaven. So obviously faith alone isn't sufficient. Um, what is faith and how much faith do you need for heaven? Paul told the Philippian Joe to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Romans 10, 9 says to confess with your mouth and believe in your heart and you will be saved. I'm going to close with Lawrence Vance who says, quote, The only difference between a Calvinist and an Arminian when it comes to assurance is that the Arminian requires holiness to prove salvation, while the Calvinist demands holiness to demonstrate election, which then substantiates salvation. So I don't believe in perseverance of the saints, I believe in preservation of the saints, and therefore I reject all five points of the tulip. And uh, the next couple of videos we will do, God willing, will be on John Calvin the man, Geneva and his legacy. Thank you.